Here's the debunking of, of the star child skull. They say that part, the skull, much of the skull is missing. It's, the skull is broken and normal and intact. It looks normal. That's a lie. Look here. You can see muscle groove come starting all the way up here from the forehead, going all the way down, and even muscle attachments here. And the part that is missing is so perfect as if it just rotted away like it was made of cartilage or much more fragile material. Getting muscle grooves and attachments. And the eye sockets are flatter. You heard this before probably. You, you follow the star child skull. The optic nerve the, the are wide are wider. This is more consistent with animals that see in ultraviolet infrared. It would have a poor depth perception, even the way believers paint the eyes of trying to get close to the human eyes or even vertebrate eyes. But these eyes were closer to eyes that see more in the infrared ultraviolet spectrum and not so much for depth perception. Maybe that's how by the light but by the intensity of light. But that's the way we perceive death. They have animals like this on Earth, but all well, snakes are vertebrate. I think they may have flat eyes like this. These eyes were completely different. Look at this. This doesn't look broken off. They get better quality. You see that their muscle grew. Or cartilage was. This doesn't really fit on. Look, it might have been a different part of his bone. Lloyd Pye died back in 2013. We know that the skull is over 900 years old. The more difference is that the debunking site will mention. It has some major physiological differences to that of a human. These are the cuts in the skulls for DNA testing, and you see that the star child, when I've been saying it's half as thick, you see very clearly here, in some points, it's even Could less be part of a disease. This is, you know, in the skull, so I mean, Could be hydrocephalic. No exaggeration there. Is it complete? This is the biochemistry of a typical human bone. Its calcium and phosphorus levels are high, and its oxygen and carbon levels are low. But with the star child, it's quite different. The phosphorus is down, and the carbon and oxygen are up. Indicating its biochemistry is more like tooth enamel than regular bone. Cortical layer here, and in here the cancellous holes where the bone marrow moves. And coming out of um, some of the cancellous holes, but also yeah, you off my blanket. embedded in the matrix of the bone are these, these fibers, these very durable, strange fibers that nobody's ever seen before. They're in no other species, and we don't really know what they are, but we just know that they're really durable because the we never mentioned those. This through here did not cut cleanly these these different fibers. That tells you they have a high high resistance factor to the blade. It lacks frontal sinuses. Has smaller chewing muscles. I actually have in. more. I noticed some other chewing muscles in different areas. Instead, its neck connects on top of its like the front, the front of the of face, thing, indicating that its neck is about half the size of a normal human neck. And here we see one clearly embedded in the matrix of the bone on the surface, yes, no doubt about it. And you know what science says about this? Ah, uh, you probably dropped it on a carpet and it picked up carpet fibers. You know, just, I mean, really, that is the answer that I give. It has to be just fibers off a carpet or something. This can't be, it really can't be in the world of mates of upper right maxilla that was found. Probably not, it doesn't really fit the rest of the bone. When one of the teeth was extracted, it Look, was found to have very heavy roots. It could be from the bottom or from a jaw or, different, or maybe a different creature. When the maxilla was x rayed, a staggering five more teeth were discovered waiting to come down. The key is that normal human bone, when you die, there are bacteria in your body that scour and eat every bit of your marrow out, and they leave your bone polished, shining, just like this, just like you see. You could eat out of that, just like the bacteria did. It's so clean. There is no marrow left anywhere. And this is the way it is with all animals when they die. With a star child, we see a big difference. 
and we also see a difference in the color too. It's much more milkier than that alabaster look of the human bone because it's got so much more collagen. But you see this red residue here sprinkled everywhere. We don't know what that is. Never seen it before. I can show you hydrocephalic baby skull. This ain't one, but I just describe one. The cracks usually deeper, and it's more lumpy. This is more uniform, to more symmetrical or working together, and the cracks are more attached. The nearest that'll possibly like it recovered. But a site also said in other videos debunking this also say DNA tests show the 100% human. Geneticist contacted me out of the blue and he said, I think you really might have something. And he said, if you send me a sample, I will take a new technique, a new shotgunning technique, which recovers much smaller pieces than the old uh, primer technique. So he took it. About Who's six that weeks guy? later, he got back in touch with me and he says, you're really not going to believe what what's happening here uh, we, we don't I don't believe it I've done it enough times now to where I'm convinced that I'm doing it right and we're getting some very unusual results some of it comes out human sure enough you see right here this sequence of 265 base pairs long 265 no question about it part of the star child is human except next slide some of the star child's dna comes back with this incredible reading no significant similarity found 342 base pairs long it's a coherent base pair sequence not found in the nih database i said well what's the answer and he says well it could be and here's where we go off the deep end could be that it's an alien born to a human mother and I said, what? How would that happen? How would you get a pure alien born to a human mother? So slide for me and send it to me. And he said, now human female has mitochondrial disease, which means that her mitochondria... Mitochondria is like the energy of a cell. They're like tiny little batteries inside a cell. children for the most part. If it's they are passed down exclusively to the mother. A, a child with her mate or husband what they can do is they can take her package put it in a dish you've heard about this and mix it with her husband's sperm and create a zygote with her chromosome package and her husband's chromosome package then they take an egg a good egg from a third party a third a woman take that woman's chromosomal package out put the zygote in Put that egg in the first woman, and she will have a baby that will be her and her husband's genes, but it will have the mitochondria of the third woman. So he said we could have the same thing. You'd have two aliens getting together, making a zygote, and for whatever reason, taking the, uh, the chromosomal package out of a female egg, putting it in, and then she will bring it to term, and it's a full alien, nothing but alien DNA in it, but it has her mitochondrial human mitochondrial Some DNA. human DNA, now, why, according why to, the, to that debunking site. We know this is a then again, that site kind of lies more than a coffee accuser.